Hey, this is René and this is part 4 of the programming tutorial where I will show you how you can write a uh, RSI Expert Advisor. In the first three parts we talked about how to create an Expert Advisor, we talked about variables and functions. And in this part, part 4, we will talk about controlled structures. Um, Control structures are important whenever you want to structure your, <laughs> your code pretty much, as the name says and as you could imagine. But um, I would, I would uh, teach you um, pretty, uh, a little bit more in-depth knowledge of um, control structures. So what I told you in one of the um, last parts is that whenever a function is called, it will be, or whenever a piece of program or source code is called, um, um, in, it is um, processed from the top to the bottom. Like for this um, on init function, you can see that first of all, it will print one, then it will print, print two, and then it will print three, and then it will print five, and then it will print four. So if I do this, you can see it in the output that um, uh, or say expert that it is calling all these print statements in the um, in the order that um, they are placed in this onInit function. So um, this is a predefined order because there's nothing uh, standing in between of this execution. But um, what if we want to have something different? Maybe we want to. Um, maybe we don't want to print the number five because it is simply wrong because. Number three is, um, or number four would be before number five. So we want to, we, we don't want to print this. Um, so we could use a, um, a if statement to not print this. So we could do it like this. If false, and I will explain this later. Um, oh no, 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 if, oh yeah, if false. Um, or now we, we will say if five is smaller than four, print, um, Five, and this will change the um, code because now, if I execute the RSI expert, you will see that um, it says one, two, three, and four, and there is no five in between because we put in um, the if statement at this point, and it says if, and and you can just read it like this: if five is smaller than four, do this. So. Um, and this statement always looks the same. You, you have if, it's an identifier pretty much for, this, for the if statement, so the computer knows that there is an if condition coming. And then you have parentheses where you put the condition inside. And then you have a body, uh, which is of course um, identified by these curly brackets. So you have an open curly bracket and a closing curly bracket, and everything inside is the body. And whenever the condition is true, like, true, then the body will be executed. So if we have this example, it, it checks if five is smaller than four, and if it's true, this will be executed. If it's not true, it will simply not become executed. So the this is skipped. And you can do something else. You can do, um, um, you can do an if else statement, statement, because after the curly bracket of the, um, uh, which, which closes the body of the if statement, you can write an else. And you can use um, some more curly brackets to um, write a body. And I could print out uh, four in here. And if I do this and compile, you will see that there is four printed two times because um, if we reach this um, point in the code, it will check if five is smaller than four, which is not true. So this will not be executed, but this will be executed because if this is not true, we will automatically execute everything that is, um, that is um, standing inside of the body of the else part of this if else statement. Um, okay, pretty pretty simple, I think. I, I hope you understand this. And we can um, enhance this uh, if-else statement by writing uh, if and then else if. So we can um, we can do it like this. If this is four. Um, if we do it like this, the computer will simply 
check it like if 5 is smaller than 4, we will execute this. If it's not true, then we will check if 5 is equal to 4. And if that is true, we will execute this. And if that is not true, we can yeah, we, we, we can go on like this. We can check if 5 is greater than 4. And then we can print something like uh, 4 or 3 or whatever. So um, it simply checks from the top to the bottom when whenever the first condition is true then the part or the body of this condition will be executed and in the end there can always be an else that is uh, the part that is executed whenever nothing of the rest is true nothing is true so in this case um, yeah you, you can think about it but um, you can clearly say that this is a true condition so five is greater than 4, so it will print 3. So the output would be 1, 2, 3, 3 again, and 4. And we can check if this is true, and it is true. I can clear this to make it more um, easy to read. So 1, 2, 3, 3 again, and 4. And if I change this to a condition that is not true, like 5 equals 4 again, we will see that there will be printed nothing is true, because nothing is true. And um, yeah, pretty often you just compare two numbers in this if statement, but you can also do other stuff like, I don't know, if you can, you can do all, si all, all um, kind of conditions in here, and maybe we will see some of them in the next part of this tutorial, but for now, this is all I want to tell you about if statements. Um, this is one control structure, if statement, uh, I wanted to teach you. Another one is, um, or I will teach you two more control structures. The first is the for loop. The second one is the while loop. Uh, loops are control structures that will be processed um, or that can be processed one or more times. And uh, for example, a for uh, loop can be uh, can look like this. Um, I, I will write it down and then explain it to you. Um, I++. Plus plus and we print i. Let me raise the other print statement because they're only confused at this point. So if I compile this, you will see that there is an output of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, oh no, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all, uh, at 9. And that is um, because we use this for loop. So whenever the, let me, let me, let me tell you how the computer thinks pretty much. Whenever the on init function is called, the computer will simply check all these lines, if there is something to do, if there are any jobs for the computer. And these are only, these are only comments, so there's not, nothing to do here. Um, but in line 9 at this point, the computer realizes, okay, there's a for loop. And a for loop is always, um, um, it always looks like this. So you have for, which is pretty much only the identifier for the for loop, which is the equivalent to the if that we saw before. And then you have, um, uh, parentheses and inside of these parentheses we will have a um, precondition then we will have a condition and we will have a post uh, condition pretty much so um, a post I don't know execution whatever you want to call it and then we have the body of the for loop and whenever the um, computer reaches a for loop it first initializes the um, uh, the for loop so we, we shouldn't call this um, uh, precondition we can call it initialization of the for loop so the initialization is called one time whenever the for loop is uh, reached in the uh, program so whenever the for loop is reached or maybe for this example if this for loop is reached we will do this because this is the initialization of the for loop which is standing bef before the first uh, semicolon and um, we will declare an integer variable of type integer, of course, with the name i, and we will uh, initialize it with the value of zero. Um, yeah, that's it for the initialization. That's that's all we do for the initialization. And this variable is only valid for the for loop. So if I want to print it here, I will get an error. Oh, wait, I have to erase this. So if I do it like this, it says, this is an undeclared identifier because the program does not know this variable here. It is on, only declared 
and usable in the for loop and afterwards at this point at this point the i variable is freed from memory already memory already and um, this is done automatically by the program so the um, the memory that is um, blocked for this variable will be um, released directly after the for loop finished so it doesn't take up too much memory um, okay so if we do this we have the initialization then we have the condition the condition is um, checked before every execution of the body so when when the program gets to this point it sees okay there's a for loop i will initialize it with i uh, equals zero you can do anything here but in 90% uh, of the cases you will do something like i is equal to something and then we check the condition which is i is smaller than 10 so at this point i is zero so i is indeed smaller than 10 so this is um so, so we have permission to execute the body and after the checking of the condition the body will be executed which we will see here so the zero will be printed and after the execution of the body we will move to this point here so the post execution um, and there is a, um, uh, an operation that is performed after every loop. So whenever this body is executed, i will be incremented by 1. So you can write either i++ or i++1. This is exactly the same. And i++ is just a shorter form of adding 1 to the value of i. So if we do it like this, you can see the output is still 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, blah, blah, blah. And um, after the first execution, it will not do this again. It will simply skip the initialization and check the condition again. The condition is now uh, still i is smaller than 10, but i is now 1 and not 0. So this is still true, but if we print i, we will see that 1 is printed instead of 0. And this, this will go on like this until we reach 9. Um, because after we printed 9, i will be increased by 1, so i is now 10. And if we check if i is smaller than 10, this condition is false and the for loop is over and everything else standing inside of this on init will be processed. Okay, so this is for for loops. I hope you can, you can follow me here. Uh, one last thing I will tell you in this tutorial is how to use a while loop. And a while loop is... Um, it can be similar similar to a for loop. A while loop is something that executes uh, that executes as long as a condition is true. So um, I could do something like this. And i is like zero is equal to zero, and I can check if i is smaller than ten, and then I can print i, and then I can increment i by one. So if I do this, this is like the exact output of the program that we had before but instead of the for loop we now use a while loop um, you see that the structure of a while loop is different so you have this while which is simply the keyword for a while loop so the computer knows that there is a while loop following and then you have the condition the condition uh, with some typos in there but i don't care and then you have the um, the body and that's pretty much it that's a while loop and um, you can have major problems with a while, while loop if this condition uh, is never false. Because if I do it like this um, and if I compile this and use the expert advisor, it will crash my meta trailer because this is true forever. Because i is 0 and it's always smaller than 10. And if I do not increment it, the value of i will never change. So this while loop will never be finished. You can try it at your own risk. <laughs> it doesn't damage your computer, so no worries. Just, just try it and you will see um, why a while loop can make your program, uh, can make your program uh, become stuck at a point if the while loop Oh, the while condition is never false so this can lead to problems and i uh, prefer for loops um, because of this reason because it's kind of easier and it's more clear that there is an exit point but um that's just um, personal preference you can also use a while loop and there's nothing wrong with it and there are cases when 
you have to use a while loop, but in most of the cases, you can simply use a for loop and there's no difference. So um, that's it for control structures. Now you know how you can like make your program do exactly what you want and not do the same thing every time. So um, yeah, you can play around with this concept. Please use if statements, um, if else statements, if you want to make it a little bit more complex and for loops and while loops and practice with this um, concept a little bit and then um, you should watch the next um, part of this tutorial where we get to actual, <laughs> actual MT5 programming and we will read the data of an indicator and we will do this by using variables and functions. So you know what this is all good for and I will see you next time. Until then, have a nice time. Bye-bye.